Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Evolving Skies, make sure you go ahead and check out the Poe Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, myself and Jack are going to be talking about Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. It's the successor to PTCGO as we know it, and there are a huge number of big changes coming with this new client. We're going to be talking about those changes today and how you can be preparing your TCGO account for the release of Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. Yeah, this uh, news is amazing this is something that i think a lot of people have been pining for especially since the uh, pandemic hit we've really seen the strain that has come under uh, pdcgo um and finally uh, we are getting a massive not only ui overhaul but just game gameplay overhaul the trading system um the the accessibility the uh, features in the game all of it's being uh, basically worked on improved um, and I think just off the bat, me and Joe are really excited about what's to come. Um, just as a little bit of an introduction, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, yesterday we saw the announcement of TCG Live, which is the new in-house client uh, for playing the Pokemon trading card game online. Basically, um, the fact that this is in-house, first and foremost, is great. Uh, they, were, they were using the company Direwolf Digital uh, to develop the game. Uh, but now Direwolf Digital are just going to be focusing on the uh, the codes side of thing and um, all of the gameplay, all of the uh, rulings and all of that stuff is all going to be done within the Pokemon company, which is fantastic news because one, that means hopefully we will get more frequent updates uh, based on, you know, uh, rulings, new cards, uh, all of this stuff. Uh, TCGO was pretty good for like at least getting sets out on time, but obviously uh, we could sometimes wait uh it, for bug fixes and particular things that weren't working hopefully this will mean that th uh, these sort of updates will be wrapped up a bit um, as well as that we we will have developers that are working on uh, a company or a project uh, that they are passionate about and me personally coming from a software development background i know it's really important to be passionate about what you're making what you're developing so this is going to be a massive massive improvement in terms of uh, potential new features of the future, uh, UI changes, sort of quality of life changes, taking on our feedback and trying to change things. Uh, it's very, very hopeful that uh, this will be a massive improvement in terms of who are the people that are actually developing the game. And in addition to this, uh, we finally have fully a fully mobile compatible game. Um, at the moment, PTCGO is playable on uh, PC and tablets. Uh, you can kind of get around this and play it on Android phones as well, but you cannot play it on iOS phones. Uh, basically, eventually, TCG Live will be accessible on all mobile devices as well as all uh, sort of desktop and laptops and that kind of thing. Um, they're doing a soft open beta. When they, when they do the open beta for the PC and Mac client on desktop, they're going to do a soft open beta uh, in Canada or a soft closed beta, I guess, in Canada uh, for mobile, and that's going to roll out. Uh, worldwide when they've, I guess, ironed out some of these fixes. But again, that's really good. It means that we can be playing TCG on the go. It means that when we're, you know, traveling to events or even just, you you know, you're sitting with your friends and you don't want to have to crack your cards out and get all your playmats out and all that stuff. Maybe you're traveling or just, uh, you know, hanging around wherever. You can just pull out your phone, play some PTCGO or PTCG Live, I guess it is now, and, you know, finally be able to play wherever you want, which is great. The next big thing, and personally for me, the most important feature is that we are getting a ranked ladder. Uh, I think it is an absolute astonishment that we haven't had a ranked ladder in PTGO yet. Uh, but now we know that they've been developing this. It kind of makes sense why they haven't been pushing a quote unquote dead game. Um, ranked ladder is so, so important for uh, one sort of people keeping people engaged. They want to, uh, you know, they want they want to be the very best. They want to be seeing how. Uh, they rank up to other people uh, around the country and around the world um, and seeing where they are in terms of, you know, potentially being the best player in the world. Now we have um, a rank we can attribute to that. That's going to be really, really good. Obviously, we don't know much about the rank at the moment, but if it's anything, anything is better than nothing. And hopefully we will even be able to get sort of leaderboards and stuff maybe on the website um, so we can really see how people are doing. A bit like the leaderboards at the moment, uh, but they're all based on like tournaments and stuff like that. And it's all kind of wishy-washy. Uh, now we will have a, a proper ranking system, which is great. Uh, another thing about a ranking system is uh, it's fantastic for trying to um, 
keep people engaged, but also expand the game outwards, which obviously we want to do. We want we want as many people playing this game as possible and uh, introducing ranks, introducing a more competitive element, even to people who have never, ever played Pokemon before, will entice them in. It will draw them in. They want to be the best at playing Pokemon. It's going to get maybe even some big streamers, some big, you know, from other card games, from Hearthstone, from uh, Magic Arena, from Runeterra, all of these different card games, even just other games that, that want to, you know, Pokemon is a huge part of everyone's life. It's proved, we've proved that with kind of how many people have got back into the hobby over the past 18 24 months um so this is the perfect time for them to get involved with trying to learn the game which is great one uh in terms of you know the game progressing and evolving but also just for content out there we're gonna have you may you may see your favorite call of duty streamer or legends of runeterra stream or anything now dipping into the pokemon trading card game which is amazing that's so exciting so yeah ranked ladder is good for so many different reasons it's my favorite feature that they're adding um but yeah very very exciting at the moment, we don't have a confirmed launch date, but the first leaked products were on uh, what? Well, the first leaked information was on Fusion Strike product, products, which releases mid-November. So I think personally, it was safe to say uh, it, we're going to be looking at around a November release date, at least for the beta. Um, I would like to think that. I think it would be a bit misleading if they released these uh, all of this sort of promotional material for it to not be out in November. I would like to see it released with the release of Fusion Strike, but obviously they already have a pretty big day on that day, so maybe it'll be a little bit after that, maybe a week or so after that. But yeah, I think we're going to see it before the end of the year, which again is really exciting. We're coming up to the end of September, so this that means we're going to have a new client within three months, hopefully, which is amazing. Finally, the trading system has been removed. It's been replaced with what we expect to be a crafting and dusting system. Um, and that's essentially what this video is going to be about today. It's going to be how can you optimize your account to deal with the fact that we're not trading anymore. There are pros and cons to trading and to dusting um, that we're going to talk about momentarily. But in general, we're going to be talking about, you know, how we can optimize the account and some of the some of the real benefits of this trading system. I think a lot of people don't like change. A lot of people are quite stuck in the mud on that and that, you know, trading is the better way. And they haven't really considered some of the uh, possibilities of this new crafting and dusting system. But I think going in with an open mind, uh, you will definitely see that this trade this trading system was subpar compared to the crafting system when you can just hopefully be able to get exactly what you want for, uh, you know, not too much effort. Yeah, I think everyone's unanimously happy about everything that's been revealed, but the trading system is the most controversial topic. So today we'll talk about our opinions, the pros and cons of each, and uh, yeah, like you said, how we can capitalize on that while we still have PTCGO. So First, let's re-familiarize uh, familiarize ourselves with PTCGO and how it currently functions. Code cards, they're the primary source. Uh, you open your packs, that's how you get your cards. Then you also can acquire locked cards uh, just through in-game play. As you go through that ladder, think about all those lightning bolts that you get. That gets you free packs, that get you, gets you free individual cards. That's really improved as PTCGO has gone on, to be fair, uh, where it's become much more... Uh, useful cards uh, over the last like year or so, the last few months, that's for sure. Um, and those then are added to your collection so that you can use them for play, but they're non-tradable assets for you. So they're stuck rigidly to your account. And then once you need to go out and get yourself new cards, you got to go and check out the trades, either make some of your own or view what's on offer publicly and it's really the Wild West out there. The prices are decided by the market and how popular they are. Really, there's a huge emphasis on playable cards because we really don't care about half the cards that are pulled out of booster packs. No one's chasing down the random, you know, like rock roughs or Rattatas that are pulled out of these packs because firstly, they're abundant and every everyone has tons of them, but no one wants to actually trade useful things for these sorts of cards. It really only boils down to, you know, the big powerful V and V Max Pokemon of the new set, maybe some of the big powerful trainer cards that you need four copies of uh, to get rolling. And that's what the entire economy of PCGO is based around. There's a ton of things right now that have absolutely no value and even if you tried to put any you know huge quantity of these up onto ptcgo they'd still do nothing for you right now we have tens of thousands of cards on on many uh clients just uh i looked at my own statistics i have fifty nine thousand cards on my ptcgo account right now and um tons of these i would say like there's probably only about a thousand that matter i would say <laughs> the rest is just all useless janky stuff that you can't even trade stuff for uh, and that's kind of a big problem with ptgo that we'll be tackling today 
So going into Pokemon Training Card the game live, what's going to be different? Uh, code cards are still going to be a great source of boosters. Uh, they've said that also PTCGO cards that you haven't redeemed already will be redeemable on uh, live, so that's good. You're still going to be able to open packs and kind of do it the same way if you just want to open packs. But trading is no longer an option. So uh, basically that means that you're locked to either just opening these packs or trying to quote-unquote craft them with these credits. So any card that you own uh, four of, uh, so in, in the game, you, like if you had, if you were to, uh, well, if you, if you had sort of five of these Rotatas or whatever, um, it, the, the, the game is going to transfer four of them over. Uh, so you're going to already have like lots of these, um, these play sets that you've already got on your TCG account. Uh, but you're, hopefully, uh, we're going to also be able to disenchant these cards, delete these cards, trade them down for a currency to then craft new cards. Uh, so that means, um, you know, you're not going to be dealing with all of these, like like Joe said, the Rattatas, the Rock Ruffs, that are never, ever, ever going to see play. You don't really care about any of them, uh, even though they're going to be worth less, and we'll get into kind of what we uh, expect some of these values to be uh, later down the line, or at least kind of the structure of how it's going to be. You're, we're going to kind of be able to trade lots of these commons in for maybe a V Pokemon or a playset of trainers or stuff like that. So all of a sudden, when you crack one of these packs and you get these five commons that you don't want you can not at the moment you just put them into your collection you know you can't trade them you know you can't really do it they're just in your collection they don't they're never going to be worth trading they're never going to be worth um you know sort of using in your decks but you can't you can't do anything with them because no one else wants them now we can just delete them get rid of them trade them for currency and make new cards which is exciting uh, crystals will be another way and again we'll get into the currencies um that look to be uh, coming out with the game um, when in uh, later in the video, but essentially you you'll still be able to do what you can with coins at the moment, where you can trade in-game currency for packs, as well as it looks like you can grab more promos and bundles than you could before. At the moment, the shop is pretty limited in what you can buy. It's just usually singular booster packs. Sometimes they have theme, well they have theme decks as well, uh, but sometimes they also have, you know, like um, a special promo or whatever. It look it looks like they're trying to bring more IRL products. Uh, onto the live software as well. So we've seen the trainer toolkit you can actually just buy with in-game coins instead of having to uh, get a code for it, which even some codes for these kind of things can be difficult to get sometimes. Uh, you are going to be able to earn that with in-game currency now, which is great. Finally, there will be a battle pass as well, which is kind of um, a lot of games have battle passes these days, to be honest. Uh, but basically, the battle pass will help you increase uh, your in-game rewards. It will be completely... Uh, optional, you won't have to buy it, but for anyone that's sort of intending to play a lot of Pokemon, these are usually worth it because you usually make your money back and sometimes more in terms of in-game currency, and a lot of the time you can chain them, so uh, between daily quests and the rewards on the Battle Pass, as long as you invest into one, you can usually, it's so, sort of self-sufficient after that, which is great. So yeah, lots of exciting things uh, going forward in how these, how we're going to be able to access these cards. Let's talk a little bit more about the pros and cons of trading versus dusting as concepts within these online platforms. Myself and Jack have obviously played PTCGO since its inception, and uh, we have also put a lot of time into Hearthstone. We have played many years of both of these games, and they both have both of these systems. So we can really weigh in on this and talk about the pros and cons from both of these, because I know there's a lot of people complaining about... Uh, moving away from the trading system. Obviously, there's the meme of it's the trading card game and why can't we do this and that and the other. But I think ultimately, we believe there's far more pros than cons to moving to the new dusting side of things. So really the only good news about trading is that if you have a friend who has absolutely nothing on their account, you can lend them cards while then they can use the cards that you lend them to actually start building up their account and then they can trade you stuff back and whatnot. Or if you just want to try new decks and your opponent and your friend has them, you can trade them for whatever else and you can mix and match really. So you don't need much on your account because someone can help you out as long as you have those contacts. And also there's the opportunity to sort of merch, I guess, where you're up trading for the small investment that you have. Let's say you start with like five codes or whatever, you start up trading and you just get into this cycle where you keep doing trades that are favorable slightly for you and you start amassing a larger collection just through the time you spend on this trading platform. And um, I don't think it's necessarily easy and it does take a lot of time to do that, but it is possible. 
even if you're not grinding through the ladder or whatnot, you could use that to accelerate your growth. Um, but in general, you can start with not much investment and work your way to a larger collection just through the means of up trading. The cons, however, are that it is extremely time intensive. Um, there are so many reasons for this. Obviously, you're spending time creating the trade in the first place or looking at what's on offer just from what other people have already posted. And a lot of people will be time wasters. They're not going to be trades that are worth your time. And if you want to make you know, a trade favorable for yourself, it could take a long time for that trade to get accepted. Right now we have, you know, like 24 hour time limits on trades. And if you wanted to go ahead and try out the new card and you set yourself, you know, an amount of packs that you feel is fair, you may be waiting till the next day until that trade actually is uh, accepted. You may even come back on to your client and the trade hasn't been accepted and you have to try again for the same card. If you're looking to try and find prices, there are websites all based around this uh, for PTCGO, but that takes more time and research, and it's just really a huge sink for you. Whereas going to a dusting system, it's just basically automatic. You're in TCG Live, you've opened a pack of Evolving Skies, you've already got four copies of a card that you pull, it insta-dusts for you, and there you go. You have those um, that credit currency available to then put into cards that you immediately want. So as long as you have the credits available, you can access those cards. So it's gonna be just way simpler for you and removes that entire headache. Speaking of headache, um, there are tons of packs that are completely useless right now. If you're opening on PTCGO and you get, you know, basically no playable V Pokemon or whatever else, the pack is essentially a dud. Yes, you pull some trainers here and there, but once you've got your playsets of those cards, outside of like trading specifically and making these sort of bundle deals that, again, is more time sync. All of these cards just sit on the account. I had a look at my PTCGO statistics, and I have uh, 66 swine-up cards from Crimson Invasion. And they're not going anywhere, <laughs> let's be honest. No one is going to be trading for these sorts of cards. And that sort of thing just kind of amasses in your collection that really doesn't do anything. And with a dusting system, even if you're pulling these cards that do, in theory, nothing for you, they can at least be uh, disenchanted, removed from your collection, uh, to then be put towards something that is going to be useful for you, no matter what that Pokemon is or whatever else. So every single time you open a pack now, there will be some value to it. It may not be a lot, of course, um, but just the raw stats of having five commons, three on commons, a reverse, a rare, or whatever, will carry some value compared to some packs that can basically be zero value right now on PTCGO. There's also the headache of scamming that we completely remove by having a dusting system because we take the Wild West human element out of this. We make it objective. We say commons are commons, uncommons are uncommons. That's your lot. Deal with the uh, system that's in place. Whereas if there's scamming going on, you know, there's the whole minefield of people trying to put up cards that have the same name, but it's a different set and all that other stuff. And it just forces more insecurity out there. And again, it's a time wasting issue for you. I also think it's much more beginner friendly to have the dusting option available uh, because uh, new players may not know instinctively what set certain cards are from, what set number these certain cards are from, what the different rarities mean, all that sort of thing. Whereas it will be naturally intuitive to a beginner if they see the value associated with each different type of rarity right in front of them. They can see these cards are difficult to acquire because they have this price tag attached to them in terms of the, the credit value uh, compared to a uh, trading system where they may not understand why their V Pokemon that they pulled is worth way less than this other one, etc. So that's another thing that's really going to be helpful for the new influx of players that we're going to be gaining from TCG Live. There's also the issue of scarcity. There's been some high profile cards that we haven't been able to get or cost a ridiculous amount of packs on the open uh, markets for TCGO. Things like Tropical Beach come to mind immediately. And if we have a, a dust system, uh, Pokemon could sort of set that tag of uh, Tropical Beach as just like the cost of a rare, the cost of an uncommon even, because it's just a stadium card, you know, um, and have that available to everyone, which makes it, you know, not necessarily one-to-one -one with IRL, because Beach is hard to get IRL as well. Uh, but it means that playing online, we're not restricted to our card pool whatsoever. It's only really how many credits you have available that constricts you. So... In theory, you have access to every single card out there. So I think that covers the main pros and cons. They're basically inverse related. Uh, the main con of a dusting system right now is that we don't know 
what our sort of like disenchant value would be when you're trying to gain credits for these cards and essentially send them into the ether. Thanos snap them out of existence because you've already got four of them um, and turn them into this credit currency. We don't know the ratio right now of how much it costs us to make cards compared to sell cards, if that makes sense. Um, so that's the big question mark. It may be a little bit more uh, expensive. We don't know. We may be opening more packs. We may not. It's completely down to these ratios, which are so far unconfirmed. So one of the only cons we have on the list right now may not even be a con for dusting. <laughs> Basically, mm. it's all good news, except for the fact that you can't lend your mates cards. So yeah, overall, we, we much prefer this system, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is, or the biggest comparison for me is think about your bulk IRL. If imagine uh, imagine a world where you couldn't sell your bulk IRL, you had to trade your commons for these V maxes, that kind of stuff. You couldn't just buy these on various websites and stuff like that. That's that's the trading system where you're not allowed to use your real world cash. The dusting system is where you're allowed to trade your bulk for cash for you to then invest in the card you want. So that's like. When you compare it to those, when you compare it to the IRL system, you can immediately see. Imagine not being able to sell your own cards. That's essentially what this uh, dusting system is. You're getting rid of the things you don't want for a currency for you to then use on things you do want. So if you're not, if you're still not sure on this system, just imagine a world where you can't sell your bulk and you have to get cards by trading your bulk. Imagine how much bulk you have to have to be able to actually trade this stuff up. And you can immediately see how a system where you can trade your bulk in for uh, currency that you can use is it what looks to be like far superior in almost every way. So we have three different currencies that we've seen in TCG Live. So we're just going to go into them a little bit because it can be a little bit confusing. We have coins, crystals, and credits. Uh, so coins are uh, acquired via ranked gameplay and quests. They're a little bit, I, I kind of see them a bit like lightning bolts at the moment, where they don't do much. In the new game, they're going to do cosmetics. At the moment, lightning bolts don't really do anything. Um, but imagine they're, they're not going to get much. They're not going to get you packs. They're not going to get you cards or anything. But they are going to get you cosmetics, deck boxes, coins, uh, avatar items, all of that stuff that, in all honesty, is very, very optional. Not Like, no one has to have any of that. So that's really the very, very free-to-play currency. Crystals, uh, which are required from daily quests and battle pass rewards, are going to be the things that are essentially what coins are now on the current PCGO, uh, where you're going to be able to trade crystals for packs, uh, as well as these promos and bundles that we've started to see. Uh, you can see down there in the left, we've got the trainer's toolkit for, I think it's 3,000 crystals. Uh, so you can kind of see that we're going to be hopefully able to trade for these um, bundle products that are just better in general than uh, just buying individual packs in certain instances. And then we've got credits. And credits are the ones that we've seen uh, look to be attributed to the rarity of a card uh, and how much it costs to craft one of these cards. Um, so yeah, this, this is, you're going to get these by uh, getting rid of your old cards. We don't know whether you're only going to be able to uh, disenchant cards you have more than four of uh, on PTCG Live or whether you can just get rid of any cards you don't want and trade them in but either way we're going to be able to trade our excess stuff that we that we open on tcg live it's important to know that we don't uh transfer it over but we do anything we open on tcg live that is extra we can then disenchant and craft into new cards so yeah uh going forward coins are the cosmetic items crystals are for packs credits are for crafting new cards Let's talk a little bit more detail about the Battle Pass, because it's going to be a big feature, I think, of the new TCG Live. And as you mentioned earlier, Jack, it's a way to get more out of your playing experience. If you're already someone who spends a lot of time on PTCGO, for example, or expect yourselves to spend a lot of time on this new TCG Live, you gain access to even more rewards as you play the game. So it's rewarding you that little bit extra. Now, of course, you can play completely without this battle pass and you'll just be navigating normally and still be getting some rewards. But this really sort of doubles down on it, that sort of thing. So you can see there's going to be a battle pass and a battle pass plus, both allowing you access to premium rewards. The upside of the battle pass plus being that little bit more expensive in terms of the uh, credits that you have to put in here. Um, it's going to allow you to immediately jump up to tier 15, which then unlocks immediately by the looks of things, eight booster packs, 
one collector pack, which is kind of an unknown entity for us right now. Kind of ominous that we don't have any info on that just yet, but that could be an array of different things from like playable cards to a way to maybe do some extra crafting. That sort of thing is quite exciting. And also 500 coins, which is just for cosmetics. But as you can see, the Battle Pass Plus if you're able to navigate it and make it all the way to the end of the battle pass by basically playing a lot of games, winning a lot of games, doing a lot of these like daily quests, that sort of thing, that will open you up to 50,000 credits, which is a lot of crafting tools for you to get extra cards. Four avatar items, just a nice cosmetic bonus. 600 crystals, which can help you buy the next battle pass that comes. Uh, one thing to note is that it's going to be on a cycle for three months by the looks of things in line with new set releases. So we could expect, for example, if we were to get it day of release of Fusion Strike, the battle pass would start then. And then we'd get that three month period before the next set is released. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of things to gain from the Battle Pass in addition to what you would already get, I, I would imagine, on the ladder. So it's a way to really make the most out of your playing experience. And I think it should, in general, roll over quite nicely uh, every uh, cycle because you're gaining so many crystals back and all these other credits and whatnot. It should be pretty efficient, I think, for the most part. And this is the part that we don't know yet, but this could be the microtransaction elements where this could be the currency that we buy onto our account and then we could spend on the battle pass and spend on booster packs in the clients. We don't actually have many confirmations on that just yet, but I would imagine this is probably the currency that's kind of the pay element, uh, if any of them. Yeah, I was going to say, the other thing is, this you've got to remember, this is completely optional as well. So I've seen a lot of people sort of really complaining about micro microtransactions and stuff. Um, one, my first point about that is, it looks like they're really, really minimizing, actually, the amount of, potentially the amount of boosters you need, because you, it can just all be done with in-game currency. Um, so that could potentially be mean that there is less money externally going into the game. So they need to be able to keep genera generating money. We need to pay these people to make the game, otherwise the game won't get developed. So you ha like they have to be able to monetize it some way. And I think some people don't realize that because like there, there are people that need to work to make this. So they need to be paid somehow. But also because this is completely optional, um, I don't think you're going to feel like you're missing out or anything. If you don't have this, you're still going to be able to access ranked. You're still going to be able to access all the decks you want. It just might cost you a little bit more. But if you're happy, like me personally, usually when I get into... Um, Pokemon sort of for a set, I really actually will limit myself to one or two decks. So if I were to do that and I didn't feel I need the 50,000 credits uh, or, you know, wanted all of the all of the premium stuff, I wouldn't have to spend this money. Um, and it's still the game is still very free to play. I've seen people being like, oh, it's not free to play anymore. Um, who said it's free to play? You know, what do you know that we don't? But actually, this game is still completely free to play if you want it to be. Um, the same way that PC Geo right now is completely free to play if you want it to be. There are there are options for microtransactions, but none of it is uh, required. None of it, I think, will even feel... I don't think you'll feel like you're missing out if you don't have it. Like Joe says, it's just for those people that know they're going to be pumping hours and hours into Pokemon because they enjoy playing it. And to be honest, with a ranked ladder and stuff, I feel like a lot more people will be doing that. Uh, to really make the most out of their time and, uh, you know, get a little bit more back. So, yeah, just some, a couple of things to note, just because I know this is probably one of the other biggest points of contention that, you know, all games are going down this dark alley of microtransactions and battle passes and stuff. But we have to be able to pay the developers and we're still paying, like, it's still optional. It's still, like, optional currency that you don't even have to invest in. So what we know about transferring over... Um, we've had a bit of a, an FAQ and the press release and stuff, and we know um, we know a lot of what will happen. There are still, you know, things that are up in the air, and basically everything we've said so far today, as well as going forward um, for the rest of the video, do take it with a pinch of salt. Um, this is the second time we've recorded this video tonight because new information came out that we wanted to, and we wanted this to be as accurate as possible. But just bear that, that in mind. Uh, always look for updates, always keep up to date as to what's going on with the latest because something that we've said in two weeks' time might not be relevant, but where we are right now, this is what we know. We know 125. Uh, no, there is a limit of 125 um, products that you can transfer over that are unopened, so that's booster packs and stuff like that. Um, you can transfer over more, but they did a little graph as to how much... Um, you will what value you'll get in the new game because you're not when you transfer these packs over they don't turn up as booster packs on the new game they turn up as currency they did a little chart of how much is worth what and the most you're going to get is for 125 products so you want to be making sure when you go into the game you have no more than 125 
um, unopened products on your account. Next up, up to four copies per card in your collection will be transferred over. Uh, excess copies will not be turned into credits. This is something that, is, that we found out quite recently that is very, very important because uh, it means, well, especially towards the end of this video, we'll come to what you need to be doing to prepare your account. Uh, this really does affect what you need to be doing to uh, get ready for PTCG Live. Uh, but yeah, that means all of the cards you've got already are going to be transferred over if you've got playsets of them and stuff like that, which is great news because it's going to mean immediately anyone playing in this format right now, bar the Fusion Strike cards that come out, things like Genesect and Mew, uh, still immediately, if you're playing right now, you're going to be able to jump straight into Ranked Ladder, which is amazing. That means that there's going to be no you know, trying to build a deck and do I want this card? Do I want that card? I've only got enough dust for one of these right now. No, if you're playing TCG right now, you can jump straight in and basically you've just got a massive UI overhaul. You can make all your decks again and you can get straight onto ranked, which I know me and Joe are going to be doing 100% because we're going to be able to finally, you know, get into playing some ranked games. Really exciting. Uh, so yeah, definitely good to know. All pre-black and white cards will not be transferred. So anything HGSS to Call of Legends. Uh, this is, I think, probably the biggest downside to this uh, new overhaul of this new game. Um, and to be honest, I know there are a lot of legacy fans out there and things like that, but catering towards standard and expanded, um, meaning that legacy is no longer a format, I think is a sacrifice many people were willing to take to be able to have a client that was better than PTCGO. Uh, but what it, what this means is basically, you know, if a lot of these HGSS uh, or Heart Gods of Zero Era cards are locked uh, because you can only really access them from the in-store trade packs now. Um, but if you do have any unlocked ones, maybe trade them over uh, to try or well, trade them into new things, even if it's just a playset of a trainer for a prime or something, just getting them out of there state that is just going to be deleted and into a state that will at least you'll get some value from uh even even if you can't disenchant or anything at least you'll have cards that will you know you can physically play on the new live client um so yeah remember that all of these hss stuff uh will not transfer and finally initially standard format will be the only playable format upon release expanded will be getting um support down the line i expect it to not be too long to be honest as well because obviously it's a big format but i think you know, them focusing, them catering towards the standard player base, which is, I believe, the larger player base in general for uh, competitive play. And it's worth noting, I feel like we've moved from PTCGO, which was a very casual game, to TCG Live, which looks to be a very competitive game. So therefore pushing the standard format, which is the competitive format, expanded is still a side format. Um, pushing standard does make sense, as much as many people that like custom formats and stuff don't like to, don't like to admit it. Standard format is what they should be pushing. And because of that, that's the only thing available on release. So if you're not sure what to get, I would focus on standard cards in the first instance, unless you know you've got all the decks you want and you are happy to invest in some expanded decks that you maybe won't be able to access for a little while. I think personally, we want to be looking for standard stuff uh, just so we have, we're able to play and able to make use out of this client as much as possible uh, upon release. Let's look into a little bit more detail now of the dust system, because this is really going to be the main way that we can maximize the value of our PTCGO account right now. So we're looking at uh, some Hearthstone comparison right now. They call it crafting and disenchanting. It could be, you know, selling or using credits to purchase, etc. cetera. Um, but really there's going to be, there won't be a one-to-one -one here where you get rid of a card you can buy back the card for the same price, or you can buy any other card for that same price of the same rarity. Like you sell a common, you can buy any other common. That's not how this is going to work. It's going to be a big reduction. And you can see in Hearthstone, disenchanting or removing an excess common from your collection will give you the eighth of the value of a common card. And that means that you can get rid of eight useless commons to then get one good common. You know, like if you're trying to get Sobbles or something like that, you know, or Mincinos, one of those sorts of cards. And the same could be said for higher rarity. Legendary is the highest rarity in Hearthstone. You could compare that to like a V Pokemon, like you can see on the slide. If you want to disenchant some excess terrible V Pokemon that you don't need, you could get rid of four of those and scrap them, turn them into a very useful card like Zacian, for example. And this is where the big uh, sort of issue is going to arise, where we don't know right now the disenchant value compared to the crafting cost. 
And that ratio is really going to be the difference between a very easy, accessible game where everyone has access to like every deck or going to be where it's a little bit pricier and we may have to start investing a little bit more into the game. Now, I would imagine that because Pokemon is one of these games where every set, there's only really about 20 or so cards out of the you know 200 card sets that are actually valuable, that as we open packs, we will be gaining a lot of free dust. So even looking, comparing at Hearthstone, I feel like Pokemon could have a worse ratio than this. We could have, you know, like a 1 in 10, for example, common uh, disenchant to craft cost. And I still think it would be very um, fine for our system. I think it'll work very well. And I imagine Pokemon, you know, it is still a kids-based game. They're going to try and make things simple. So a 10 to 1 ratio doesn't make that like it makes sense on the lower end of the scale it doesn't make too much sense on the higher end when you're looking at like full arts and v's exchanging for one another but whenever you're opening these packs like the amount of cards that are actually good compared to bad is is really low so um this dust system will kind of be the make or break of the game and how they balance this sort of thing but ultimately the thing that we need to take away is that right now we need to be stocking up our ptcgo accounts with potentially some of these cheaper V cards, for example, because when we convert to TCG Live, we could then be uh, disenchanting them, getting rid of them, etc., to turn them into the best cards possible. Now, of course, we need to stick to the four of copies, of course, because otherwise they won't transfer over. So you, you might need a variety package of some of these worst Vs, but it could end up that it's cheaper for you right now, for example, to trade for the Flapple Garb uh, Butterfree and Arctivish than it would be for a Zacian. I think Zacian right now is like four to five Evolving Skies packs off the top of my head. Uh, the market is changing quite rapidly at the moment still. Uh, but it could end up cheaper for you to trade for these other things. And then when we jump over to this new TCG Live system, if you disenchant the cards that you've traded for, specifically on PTCGO, it means you could get more value out of the collection right now. So I think at the moment, PTGO, the trade system, it, it's a mad scramble right now because people are trying to redistribute sort of their own wealth in their own collection. And there's a lot of moving pieces. So do be careful when you're making these trades. And there's also no confirmation that you can disenchant cards if you don't have more than four copies. Oh, sorry, yeah, if you don't have more than four copies. I would imagine, seeing as that we've seen every other d uh, dust system for every other card game does have that option where... You could end up having zero Flapple, even if you pull two, for example, because you remove them from your collection completely and transfer them into other cards. That's not confirmed, but it's very, very likely, I would say. Um, and it means that we can redistribute our wealth in a, in a better way, in a more positive way. Now, you may want to stay safe, and I would still encourage this. Still get your playables first, because at the very least, it means that on day one, you can be playing the game <laughs> and have decks that are uh, viable. So don't start stripping away your collection and dispersing it into like really old random EXs that do like nothing in the game or whatever. Um, so be careful in that front, of course. Um, but just know that this could be a way that we can maximize the value of our collection when we are trying to strip down some of our five and six of copies of certain cards. Uh, these could be directions that you look into, not just diverting them straight into the rare immediately. Is there anything else that you want to touch on, Jack, here? Uh, I think the only other thing to mention is the tweet about duplicate protection. So duplicate protection is this idea where if you already have um, four Zations, you can't pull another Zation. Say in this uh, instance, you can see that a V is, when you when you disenchant it, is worth, you know, a fraction of what it's uh what it's actually worth if you have the physical card uh or, or if you have the actual card i should say um one one tweet i did see from a developer and i'm going to fact check, check this so please d check the description in case i have uh, found out to be wrong but i did see this uh, the other day that basically uh duplicate protection will mean that you can't get five six seven zations that you're just immediately going to have to disenchant because you don't want that well you can't use them and they're going to be worth less than their actual value what it looks like the system is going to do is it will then, if you don't have a full set of Zamazentas, the next V you pull will be a Zamazenta. It can't be a Zation because you've got your four Zations. You can't ever use that fifth one. So the system will know not to give you another one. Uh, again, I am going to fact check that. So please just double check down in the comments or the description in case I've added a little note saying I've misunderstood that. But from what we know about one Hearthstone's um, duplicate protection system, plus the tweets that I've seen, uh, that's also going to be really good for people that just want to crack packs and open up these packs. You're not going to end up with excess commons, uh, ex well, excess copies of commons and commons, even um, 
you know, some of the V's and trainers and stuff like that. You're only ever, you're you're never going to be wasting cards, wasting pulls, if that makes sense. Which is also another great thing about this new system. So, what do you do if you're a current PTGO player? I imagine this is what a lot of people are here uh, on the video for. If you're playing PTGO right now, what should you be doing to your account to make sure you're getting the most out of when the new update goes or the new app goes live? First off, trade away great any any copies of more than four cards that you have for packs or cards. We know that we're not getting to keep um, these. We know that we're not getting to get the uh, value for them when they when they're converted over. So you might as well just trade them for things you don't have, or even just packs. Um, you know, trading even if it's a down trade of like a Zation for two or three bad Vs. It, as we mentioned in the new system, it might turn out that these two or three bad Vs are worth more than a Zation anyway. So just trying to fill out your collection with play sets of everything is one of the most important things to be doing. Obviously, focus on the playable stuff first, then maybe the semi-playable stuff, and then really go for the bulk at the end. Uh, but even just getting bulk, being able to drag as much over from your PTCGO account over to your live account is going to be really, really useful. Uh, if it turns out we can't disenchant them, that's a shame. But at least we can basically play everything because we're pulling over lots of different play sets here, there and everywhere. And if we can disenchant them, we've already got a backlog of stuff that we don't need. Even these commons and commons, excess Vs and stuff that we can immediately push into Fusion Strike stuff and start playing with, you know, Genesect, Mew, all of this good stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's really, really good. And this this new system is really nice because if this if that if the dis disenchant system works the way we think it's going to or we hope it's going to, I should say. Um, you can be trading now a singular pack for like an Agatha or a Beauty or an Aroma Lady or something like that on the trades. That will come over to the new game as an Agatha or a Beauty or an Aroma Lady as a full art. You'll be able to disenchant that for a certain amount and maybe that will go towards a quarter of, you know, a Mu V Max. Now a Mu V Max, it, say you trade, say you need, it, it goes towards a quarter, you need four of those. You've traded four packs and you've got yourself a Mu V Max. That would never, ever, ever be possible on the previous system, but now potentially that's what pos that's what's possible with the new system. Now it is worth noting that obviously that is not guaranteed. That, take that with a grain of salt. We don't know that's how it's going to work, uh, but that's that's another upside of this new system. We could potentially be getting more value for these dead packs, for these dead weight, uh, full arts trainers, that kind of stuff, um, which is really, really exciting. So yeah, make sure you're trading away your excess stuff, even unplayable things, just to make sure you bring over as much as possible to the new game. Next up, accumulate 125 open pack unopened packs. Uh, I'll have a look on the Pokemon website for their full breakdown of uh, how much you get for each tier of how many unopened packs you bring over. But like I said at the start, anything more than 125 will not gain you any more value. So the most you will e the most value you will get, or the most amount of value, raw amount, will be 125. Um, so yeah, you don't want to go over that. Next, trade away excess packs for unknown cards. Again, this is similar to trading away the extra copies of cards you have already. Um, we also now know that because we're not bringing these over and being able to dust these extra copies, uh, you really should be sharing these out. So get your group of friends, work out what you have between you, share them out. If you've got 10 copies of Aurora Energy and your mate has none, send him over a playset because then you both take a playset over rather than you taking a playset over and you losing six just to the Aether. You might as well both head in with a playset of Aurora Energy and you can really work with your friends to potentially build two or three full TCG, TCG Live accounts for people um, for you to use as soon as the game starts because all of a sudden you've got all of these cards that you're not you've not been hoarding, but you haven't been you know trading between you, which is great. Finally, use as many tournament tickets as possible. We know that tournament tickets aren't getting transferred over. We know that tournaments, um, if they will be in the new system, I would imagine will be handled differently. But they're not going to be a ticket-based system, similar to the one we have right now. Uh, and we're not transferring these tickets over, so you might as well just use them. Using them can also net you more booster packs, more coins for uh, you know these trades. You know, all of that stuff, even just buying with your coins in-game locked packs to open to get more locked copies that you can drag over to live as well is going to be really important. So make sure you use all of your tokens uh, because you're just then going to be able to get more packs to trade, more coins to use, all of that good stuff. Speculatively, like I mentioned, uh, you can trade for playsets of unplayable high rarity cards to try and take advantage of a dust system if this is the way it's going to work. Again, take it with a grain of salt, but that Agatha into a Genesect or into a Mu Max or anything kind of um, example I used earlier on is the best example where you 
Uh, right now, you can trade a pack for a full art Agatha. You bring the full art Agatha over. You trade it for a quarter of the value of maybe a full art um, Mu V or whatever. And all of a sudden, you've traded one pack for a quarter of a Mu V. That equates to four packs for a Mu V. That would never, ever, ever happen on the current system. So if you have excess um, sort of packs and cards, you can try and do that. Now, it is worth noting, make sure you do your playables first. We've said it twice in this video already, but once again, do your playables first. Go into PTCG Live being able to play a deck because uh, one of the most important things will be able to will be trying to play uh, the game and immediately getting rewards off of the rank ladder and stuff. So make sure you get all your playables first so you can play all sorts of different decks here, there, and everywhere. And then if you have excess stuff, that's when you want to be maybe taking this risk with the higher rarity unplayable uh, trainers and full arts and stuff <laughs> like that. And then for uh, new players to TCG Live, uh, this is going to be directed at you. There are basically three options as we see it, uh, how to interact with this new client. So you can, first of all, simply just wait for the launch of the beta because we have been told that we are getting eight free pre-constructed decks. The issue right now is we don't really know the power level of these decks. If you can just jam them in the ladder early and actually expect to win a few games, or they could simply be similar to theme decks. They could be like the League Battle decks that we've had previously. They could be the V-constructed decks like the uh, Venus or the Blastoise, those sorts of things. We really have no information on those as of yet. This is really the stand back approach and just wait until... Uh, you wait and see until we have more information about these sorts of things. This is going to be the sort of risk-averse method. Option two is going to be to buy some PCGO codes right now, uh, but then wait until the beta of TCG Live is launched and then input those codes for use because they are backwards compatible. You can still open uh, packs of cards uh, with PTCGO codes in, they will be transferable onto TCG Live directly. So you can be on TCG Live inputting PTCGO codes, which is really good. And of course, it means that you don't have that issue of being limited to four copies not transferring over. So if you save the codes until you're on live, it means that every time you are getting excess fifth, sixth, seventh copies of um, you know common cards, they insta dust for you, which isn't going to be the case on PTCGO. So um, that's a really important way to sort of save some value, bank some value for like day one of TCG live release. That's when you start inputting the codes. That's when you start gaining um, credits to actually start putting into real things if you are going to be opening these booster packs. And then there's option three, which is download PCGO now, knowing that even if you don't want to play the game now, you're waiting until you get a ranked ladder, you could buy some codes and simply start trading to acquire cards for one standard deck. I would say if you're going to download PCGO now, like I said, do not open those packs because you don't get the extra copy benefits that you get when you open them in TCG Live. But what you do get is the packs themselves that can be traded for a deck, which means day one of release of TCG Live, when you log in, your uh, PTCGO account will automatically transfer what you've acquired, which means you can get those um, that deck transferred over. So if you trade packs for playsets right now, I imagine playsets are going to be going cheap right now as well, because so many people have, you know, 10, 12, 15 copies of Boss's Orders, you know, like Crystal Cave, all these random trainers, Quick Balls, that sort of thing. No one needs these. They're fire selling right now just because packs are more valuable to them than zero, uh, which is what happens if all your excess cards go nowhere, basically, right? So it's a great way to get them in on the cheap if you just want to build decks right now, even just getting playables right now and just letting those sift through to TCG Live. So I think it's the most involved option. You have to do a little bit of research there. You have to do the uploading of Pizza Joe and buying some codes and that sort of thing but i think that's the best way to reap some rewards because you could end day one of tcg live and have that playable deck you can jump straight into rank ladder you can get the full experience that we're getting as people who have played uh PCGO for a long time with that small front-loaded investment um you save yourself a lot of uh grief really because you don't know much about the pre-constructed decks right now you know that you can get the full experience so i think uh that's the option that i would probably take but obviously i'm someone who's already involved in tcgo so it's a bit of a biased uh, take I would say and then there's also that same speculation that we have for the players right now if you do want to download PTGO you could 
you know, if you're really going high roller, start getting some of these unplayable high rarity cards. And it could be a way that you could enter TCG Live as a king just by getting some of these random full arts that people are, again, trying to fire sell right now. We know that the trade um, list on PTCGO is pretty wild. So keeping at least an eye on that for the option to pounce to get some of these high rarity, you know, like gold cards, rainbow rares of cards that see no play. Like a random Flapple VMAX that's a rainbow rare now is treated as a rainbow rare or like a fourth of a rainbow rare, like Jack said, just in our example. It could end up being an eighth, it could end up being a tenth, whatever. Um, but if you are taking that gamble, you could then transfer all those credits into playable cards. So it could be a way that you end up uh, having much more value on your account for the small price that you're putting in via PTCGO codes. But that again is speculative. I would still go with the one deck option so you can get the full experience of TCG Live day one. Uh, but I can also see the value of the other two options as well. It depends how risk averse you are <laughs> essentially uh, to see how you wanna enter this new world of TCG Live. And that's it. TCG Live, I think, is the biggest update to the Pokemon trading card game uh, ever, to be honest. Maybe uh, PTG's initial release was, uh, I guess, arguably bigger. <laughs> but this, I think, is the biggest update we've had in a decade. And I think so far, it looks to be an absolutely fantastic one. There are huge features that I think we would have done a lot more for that we haven't had to really sacrifice much for. I think the system, the new dusting and crafting system will be um infinitely better than the trading system when people are used to it and again harking back to my analogy of bulk just think about that analogy where if you imagine if you couldn't sell your bulk and you had to trade your bulk for cards uh i think that kind of puts it into perspective as to how good of a system uh the dusting system can be um and rank ladder rank ladder i think is the the pinnacle of all of this it's so important uh i think and i think it's it's really really going to be very exciting seeing comp people compete uh, on this rank ladder. It's going to really change the way content creation is made, I think. Me and Joe are so excited for how this is going to change uh, for some series for us. We've got, we're have got we already having ideas about series. We're having, uh, you know, we're going to change the structure of videos, change the structure of um, streams, all of that stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, and we're going to be at the front of all of it. We're going to be doing so much TCG Live content. This is going to be like a rebirth for us as well. We're so excited. Uh, this is the best news we could have had in a long time, I think. I'm very, very pleased with what we've seen so far. Couldn't have said it better myself. We've wasted enough of your time. So <laughs> thanks so much for watching, guys, if you've stayed to the end. Um, and yeah, we'll be back with another video soon. We're both super excited for live. So keep an eye out for that content and more standard stuff as well. So cheers.